Hi, Carissa. I just got this brand new book called Barbara Throws a Wobbler. And I just was so excited. I wanted to share it with you. Ready? Look at Mr. Grumpy Toad over here. Barbara throws a wobbler. Hmm. Barbara is in a very bad mood. I am not, she said, but she was. It had started in the morning because of a sock problem. She can't find the ones that match. And at lunchtime, there had been a strange pee. Then Barbara stepped on a crack, which she had been trying very hard not to do. Things were going from bad to worse. Her friends were frolicking in the park. Ooh, blowing bubbles. Hi, Barbara, said Martha. Come and play, said Otto. But Barbara didn't feel like a frolic. Oh, she's got ice cream. Of course, Barbara had been in bad moods before. She'd had huffs, grumps, upsets, and strops, but today was different. Today felt like a hundred bad moods wrapped up in one. And when another terrible thing happened, <gasps> oh, Barbara threw a great big wobbler. Oh my. And then suddenly the wobbler was actually there. It loomed over Barbara's head. What's wrong with Barbara, said Small Bob. And what's that weird thing? Nobody knew. The wobbler hovered in the air, gloopy and heavy, like an angry jelly. Are you okay? asked Otto, but the wobbler didn't want to talk. So neither did Barbara. Would you like a cuddle? asked Martha, but the wobbler was not accepting cuddles. So neither was Barbara. Barbara didn't even want any of Small Bob's ice cream, which was really strange. No! The wobbler grew and grew and grew. Soon it was the only thing that Barbara could see or feel. She shook her fist and gave a great big yell, but the wobbler wasn't going anywhere. What if I'm stuck here forever, thought Barbara. Let me go, said Barbara. Let me go, said the wobbler. Rarg, she shouted. Rarg, shouted the wobbler. Stinky bumhead, shouted Barbara. Stinky bumhead, shouted the wobbler. Barbara giggled. Stop copying me, said Barbara. I can't help it, it said. I'm your wobbler. You made me. I made you, asked Barbara. Yes, said the wobbler cheerfully. You were really upset and angry and sad. So here I am. Barbara had to think. It had been quite the day. Then she thought of some more and said, Well, if I made you, can I unmake you? Of course, said the wobbler. You're in charge. So Barbara took a deep breath and started to squish the wobbler down. The wobbler got smaller and smaller and smaller until Barbara could hold it in her paw. Goodbye, you strange little thing, she said. Oh, don't worry, chirped the wobbler. I'll be back before you know it. And with a pop, it disappeared completely. Barbara saw that her friends were waiting for her. Are you okay? asked Martha. I had a massive wobbler, said Barbara, but now I feel much less wobbly. Barbara was now accepting cuddles.
and ice cream. Barbara went back to the park to frolic with her friends. Surely they wouldn't be any more wobblers today. <gasps> hmm. I spy a few. Would there? Uh-oh. What's happening? That bird's making a mess. <gasps> oh, his kite's in the tree. Bad moods, a very useful guy. Figure one, the sulk. A quiet mood that often appears after losing a game or being refused treats. Figure two, the tizzy. Usually noticed around bedtime or when a precious item has been lost. Figure three, the seed. Angry but clever, will quietly brew while thinking up rude names for people. The Wobbler. If you've already forgotten about wobblers, go back to the start of this book immediately. The Grump. Very, very sad and gloomy. Not even a tickle under the armpit can cheer up a grump. The Huff. When something is definitely not your fault, but everyone is saying that it's your fault. Oh, how's the frog feeling? He's happy now. The end. Thanks for reading the, my new book with me. Talk to you soon.